I'll be reading tonight from Psalms, the eighth chapter. If you want to follow along. Okay. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set the, the, thy glory above the heavens. Out of thy mouth of babes and sufferings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Mm -hmm that thy mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Mm -hmm. When I considered my heavens, mm -hmm. the work of thy finger, the moon and the stars, mm -hmm. which thou hast ordained, mm -hmm. what is man that thou art mindful of him, mm -hmm. and the son of man that thou visited him? Mm -hmm. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, mm -hmm. and has crowned him with glory mm -hmm. and honor. Thy mayest him to have dominion mm -hmm. over the, the work of thy hands. Mm -hmm. Thy hast put all things under his feet, mm -hmm. all sheep and oxen, yea, mm -hmm. and the beasts of the, of the field, mm -hmm. the fowl of the air, and mm -hmm. the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through mm -hmm. the path of the, uh, the seas. Mm -hmm. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Amen. 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 Thank you for the reading. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how oh, great is their name. Amen. We are here <coughs> at the first part of the session to pray for those that stand in need of. We know that we all stand in need. Uh, what fathers used to say, uh, uh, it's not uh, you that stand in need of, it's me, O oh Lord, that stand in need of prayer. Amen. And we know that prayer changes things. Amen. If we believe and trust, uh, we know that uh, there's so much going on in our uh, community, in our homes. The streets, corners, the streets, the cities, um, uh, our country, and the world is so much going on. Uh, you have people shooting each other, you know, uh, beating up on each other, people that's, that, that's, that hate each other, uh, people that stress. Uh, uh, evilness uh, among uh, uh, people and claim to be uh, good. Uh, we see that somebody just got uh, attempted assassination or, or they were assassinated today. That means that people are still hating. They're proud in what uh, uh, things uh, for themselves. And we know that uh, that's not going to change because we're living in the end of time. Scripture tells you there, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be a natural uh, 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 weather. There's going to be mothers against daughters and fathers against sons and, and parents against children. So children against parents. So we know that we uh, stand in the need of prayer. So we come tonight to pray for those that we know that stand in the need of prayer. If you know someone that's standing in the need of prayer, we'll have prayer for them. In the name of the, the floor is open. Your mom and dad? My mom and my dad, yes. Okay, uh, okay. They're just got to keep them, they, they help. Uh, Amen. My dad went through a, a trial uh, last year, and uh, God brought him through, I pray. Just want to for both of them to forgot to bless their help. Amen. Amen. And my cousin. Amen. My Amen. Amen. I always ask for prayer for my family near and far. 
study session. Amen. May we pray. O most holy and eternal God, uh, we come again before your throne uh, uh, just thanking you for being our God and thank you for being our Savior. We come thanking you, Lord, for uh, what you've done for us in the past and what you've done for us today and what you're going to do for us in, in the future. And we just come, Lord, asking that you would just continue on the work, which you will, uh, but uh, uh, blessing us with the faith. Uh, mercy and kindness and, uh, and blessing us with your grace. Lord, we know that you are a mighty God and you can do all things except fail. So we just uh, ask you, Lord, to bless us and remind us of what the Word of God said. Uh, you said, Lord, that you are our refuge. Uh, you are our provider and our protector, and you are our uh, strength in the time of need. So, Lord, uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would uh, continue to remind us in some way that we really understand, Lord, that you are all in all. All we have to do is, is to be <coughs> faithful and to be uh, uh, respectful of your word, uh, continue to study your word, and continue to have the relationship with you so that we can uh, uh, ask anything of you. And we know that you will grant it whatever we ask according to your will. So we just ask, Lord, that you would uh, keep us faithful, keep us tuned in, and continue to bless us that we'll walk with you worthy. Uh, so that we can be that ambassador uh, that you called us out to be. That we know, Lord, that uh, you have said in your word that uh, uh, God so, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son uh, here on this earth, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we just ask him, Lord, that you would uh, bless us that we can be that ambassador. Tell the dying world what you have said in your word. And then as we are ambassadors, we tell, not take your word and put it under a bushel, but to go tell someone about you. Because you said in the word that your desires are no one to be lost. So we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless us. And then, Lord, we've had names that have been called out, our sister Young and, and uh, Sister uh, uh, Veronica. Uh, uh, and um, we just ask, Lord, that you would, uh, 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 that you would be mindful of 
all the, was called on all the ones that stand in need of prayer. We know, Lord, that you can bless, you can curse, and you can uh, give salvation. So we just ask, Lord, that you would uh, bless uh, those that are standing in need of. We know, Lord, there's, the, there's those, those that are aging, Lord, in the golden years. And uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, we, uh, they can't do like they used to do. So we need uh, help and assistance, but we know that we can get the help from you. And we can get the encouragement from our church family. Bless me and bless my wife also. And then, Lord, we just ask that you continue to watch over your life as we continue to worship you and being guided by you uh, and worshiping worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless no life and bless our pastor and bless the, uh, uh, the church family uh, individually and collectively. And then, Lord, uh, we come to learn more about you and your word. Uh, we know that we're in uh, uh, Galatians and we're talking about faith. And uh, we just ask, Lord, if you can bless us with that same kind of belief and faith as Abraham, that we can know that when Jesus did come, that uh, we all, the believers, would be blessed. Uh, that we can have salvation and eternal life. Bless again our pastor to teach word and uh, bless those that's on the airway uh, listening to uh, the teach word and again we just ask that we uh, will be blessed that we will not take the word and hide it in the worship. Again bless uh, this session that we may have an open heart, a heart that is circumcised, that we will uh, uh, obtain, and that we will uh, be obedient to your word, that we can be a better person uh, tomorrow than we are today. Continue to bless our children wherever they might be. Put a head of protection around them, Lord. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and dangers. This is my prayer for Christ's sake, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Jesus is on the main line. Since 
that had not done any works before believing in Christ, the clear answer is that God sent his Holy Spirit in response to their faith. Mm -hmm. Second, Paul begins to quote the scriptures as an argument. Mm -hmm. Paul shows that the scriptures have always pointed to God's blessing mm -hmm. coming by faith and a curse from God coming through the law. Mm -hmm. Paul states very flatly that the people of faith not the people of the law are Abraham's children. Mm -hmm. And after all, Abraham was counted righteous, justified for believing God. Mm -hmm. And God told Abraham that all nations would be blessed through him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, those of faith are the ones blessed along with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Paul quotes Deuteronomy Habakkuk and Leviticus to show that the law brings only a curse to those who fail to follow it in any way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about, it's, it's, uh, it's about, the, the law is not about faith, it's about actions. Mm -hmm. And since all people fail to keep the law in some way, Christ had to pay the curse with his own life. Mm -hmm. And that's how he redeemed those in slavery under the law so that they could be justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Paul's final argument, <clears throat> which we will see tonight, presented to the Galatians is a legal argument. So, and this is, and, and this argument kind of puts the icing on the cake. Now, covenants are what? Legal documents. Mm -hmm. And such, the covenant God made with Israel, recorded in the law, did not undo the covenant he made with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Now the promises of that covenant remain in place all the way until the arrival of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. who legally claimed those promises. Now all who come to Christ by faith are entitled to share in that inheritance including non-Jewish people known as Gentile. Mm -hmm. In fact, that legal transaction gives believers a permanent standing as God's children whether Jewish, Greek, slave, free, male, or female, all are one in Christ, since all are equal heirs to the inheritance God promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. We up to speed. Any questions or comments? So if you will, look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 15. If you dare say amen. amen. And it says, Brethren, I speak after the matter of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannul or added to there thereto. They give me the NIV. Brother and sister, let me take an example for everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duty established, so it is in this case. Amen. Anybody else have a, uh, another version? All right. So Paul has attacked that ideal from two directions so far. First, he pointed to the Galatians' own personal experience. They received the Holy Spirit after trusting in Christ and before doing any works of the law. <laughs> Second, he argued from the Old Testament scriptures that God's word has always taught that salvation is by faith, starting with the declaration that Abraham was declared righteous justified for believing in the Lord. Now Paul begins to argue with the false teaching of the Judaizers from a legal standpoint. He asked the Galatians to think about a legal covenant. And probably Paul is referring to it with a legal document declaring who receives an inheritance once the person who created the will has died. Now under Greek law, a will could not be altered once it was fully completed. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's the system to which Paul is referring to. Now, but in any case, Paul's readers understand that some contracts, even human contracts, cannot be revoked or changed. They're binding, binding no matter what circumstances fall. So Paul was showed that the covenant, that God's covenant with Abraham, was binding still even after the law was put in place. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. And verse 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed, 
were the promises made. He said, not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. The NIV, please. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, mm -hmm. but and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Amen. So now, can God promise God's promises to Abraham and the descendants really be claimed by non-Jewish people all these century later, centuries later. Amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Now the Amen. Y'all hear the question? Y'all hear the question? Yes. Can God's promises to Abraham and his descendants really be claimed by non-Jewish people all these centuries later? Oh, non-Jewish. Yes. Amen. Amen. But the Judaizers would say no, mm -hmm. claiming that the law of Moses took the place of God's promises to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And we know God is not going to say something and it doesn't come to pass. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, Gentiles who wanted to be included in God's family must be circumcised and follow the law, mm -hmm. or so they say. Mm -hmm. But Paul insists that a covenant cannot be revoked even by new agreements later on. Mm -hmm. God declared Abraham righteous, justified, because of what? Faith. Because of his faith. Mm -hmm. So God made promises of great blessings to Abraham's offseed on the basis of faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, when we say Abraham's offsprings, we now let me say this. Let me ask you. Paul says, now to Abraham and his seed. Mm -hmm. In this verse, and when he says his seed, he's talking about his physical descendants, his bloodline, where the promises made. And what was Abraham's offspring promise? God would make many nations. What was Abraham's offspring promise? Inheritance. Promised land. Go to Galatians. I mean, go to uh, Genesis chapter thirteen. There we go, baby. Genesis chapter thirteen, verse fifteen. Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. For all the land which thy seed is, to thee will I give it, and to thee thy seed forever. Who seed is he God talking to here? He's talking to who first? Talk Who's he to talking Abraham. to? And, and he's talking to Abraham, and he promised Abraham's what? Seed, seed. Abraham's descendants land. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now the Jews were the physical seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But those in Christ are Abraham's spiritual seed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now Paul insists that the offspring God was referring to was in fact one man, Christ himself. Okay? Paul says, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. So Paul's not saying that the promise of Abraham were not for the rest of of his descendants, but that the focus of those promises was singular. One singular person, one singular offspring or seed, and that being Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, Jesus during his time on earth was fully human, was a fully human Jewish man in addition to being a God in human form. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew chapter 1, it tracks the genealogy of Abraham all the way to Jesus Christ. So Christ was Abraham's descendant and would become, by God's covenant, the focus of all God's promises to Abraham. So Paul will go on to show then that all who are in Christ are included in those covenant promises as well. So we know Abraham's offspring was promised what? But they were also promised that if they come to faith in Christ, they will have salvation. But his spiritual seed was also given that same promises by coming to faith in Christ, we will receive salvation. All right? So we got that clear. Now, verse 17 says, And this I say, 
that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Read the NIV. What I, what I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. A Amen. Amen. So we have God's promise, promises to Abraham, and we have the law coming 430 years later. All right? Now, Paul clarifies the point of his illustration. God made a covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And that covenant was a one-way promise by God to bless Abraham and his offspring in specific ways. Mm -hmm. The Judaizers were apparently telling people that the law replaced God's covenant promises to Abraham. And Paul soundly rejects that idea. Although the law was instituted 430 years later mm -hmm. under Moses, mm -hmm. it did not board out God's pr previous promise to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. there, was so, no, there was no law when God gave it. Exactly. Promise. But I'm saying when the law came 430, uh, 430 years later, that the covenant promise to Abraham still mm -hmm. existed. Right. That the law of Moses did not cancel out God's covenant mm -hmm. promise or God promise to Abraham. So those in effect, because God's covenant cannot be changed. Amen. God is not going to say something to take it back. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So in the last verse, Paul made a point of indicating that this promise was given to Abraham's mm -hmm. singular offspring, mm -hmm. not a plural group or collection of men. So Judaism had always believed that the promises given to Abraham will one day be fulfilled in a single person, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Jesus, as Abraham's ultimate offspring, received those covenant promises made to Abraham. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's why all who trust in Christ's death for their sin, placing their own lives in Christ, also receive the blessings promised to Abraham's offspring. Mm -hmm. Now, we receive whatever Jesus is entitled to because we have been given credit for his sinless life. <clears throat> and he has taken the penalty of our sinfulness. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, we as spiritual seed of Abraham were not promised any land. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. But we were promised salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible also tells us that we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? Any questions or comments? Do you, are y'all tracking? Are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, verse 18 says, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Mm -hmm. The NIV for if the inheritance depended on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Amen. So now Paul makes an undeniable point of logic. He describes the covenant promises made to Abraham as an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Something passed down from one person to his or her offspring. Mm -hmm. All right? And this inheritance was given by God's promise. Mm -hmm. Now theologians call it, some theologians call it a unilateral covenant, meaning that it was one-sided, okay? God didn't ask Abraham to do anything to receive his promises, right? Abraham, Abraham already had believed in God, mm -hmm. and God promised Abraham specific blessings with no strings attached, mm -hmm. all right? Now, if you have to now follow the law of Moses to receive the blessing God promised to Abraham, what kind of promise is that? Amen? Y'all get that? Y'all track it? So in short, it turns unconditional blessings into conditional blessings. It changes God's gift from a promise to a merit-based performance. 
One, we can never be good enough to merit. Amen? God's promise to Abraham was based on Abraham's what? His faith and not any works of the law because the law did not even exist during Abraham's time. The only thing God required was what only God imputed righteousness to Abraham because of Abraham's faith and, gave, and, and promised Abraham seed, land, and his spiritual seed along with the physical seed by coming to faith in Jesus Christ they will receive salvation. Amen? Now Romans 3, go ahead. But the law did come into that God's second covenant with Abraham when he told him to get circumcised? No. Uh-uh. The, the law did not come in effect to 430 years later. Well, well, I'm just saying that was part of the law being circumcised. That's why the Judaizers talked about circumcision. Yeah, they talked about circumcision up to that, up to even when the law was given and, and people were circumcised. Amen. So what you're saying is yes, but the law was not given until 430 years later. Right. Now, Romans, they talking about, see, because when you try to re, uh, replace the, the promise to Abraham with the law, it's merit based, right? Which means you got to keep, you got to keep the law all the way in order to receive any blessings from God, mm -hmm. which makes it merit based. Now, we do that on our circular jobs. When I worked, when I was on my, uh, the job I retired from, my performance was based on on merit. And if I did good in my performances, I received the reward. Right. But it was merit based. But Abraham's promise, God's promise to Abraham is not merit based. It's based on God promising Abraham these blessings because of Abraham's faith. Mm -hmm. Which means God is faithful in his faithfulness, he will keep his promises mm -hmm. to Abraham and Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. Now, because we'll never be good enough Never. And a lot of people don't like hearing these things, but we'll never be good enough. Mm -hmm. Never be good enough. We'll never accomplish the things God wants us to accomplish unless Jesus accomplished those things for us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because Romans 3 and 10 says, as it is written, it is none righteous, not one. No, not one. Amen. Amen. Now, this raises an obvious question. One that the Judaizers must have asked loudly and sarcastically. So what was the point of the law then? Okay. Anybody else? What was the point of the law? To show us how simple we are. That's one. Actually, it was a guardianship until Christ came. And that guardianship was it's like a, a prison, a, a warden, a prison, a prison guard ex, a, 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 over us to keep us in keep us in check, keep us in line, so to speak. Anybody else? What was the purpose of the law? All right. Well, Paul answered in the following verse. Paul says in verse 19, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, until the seed, that seed being Jesus Christ, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. The NIV? Why then was the law given to all? It was added because of the transgressions until the seed, to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a meteor. Mediator. Mediator, I'm sorry. Amen. So now Paul asks the obvious question. Why then the law? In other words, what's the point? Why did God create and implement this complex collection of rules and regulations for his people, Israel? And Paul's answer is that the law was added because of transgressions. In the Greek, transgression means breaks, violation, breaches, or more simply as sin. One purpose of the law may have been to show the Israelites what actions were sinful so they could avoid them. Mm -hmm. But God in his grace gave them the law to show his own standard 
for their right and wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Paul may also mean something else by the phrase because of the uh, transgression. However, it is true that the law showed the Israelites God's standard for right and wrong. But more than that, through the law showed the Israelites that they wanted to do what they wanted to do was wrong and were unable to obey God's standards perfectly. Or as Paul put it in Romans 5, verse 20, the law came to increase the trespass. So God instituted the law in part to show the Israelites and all of us just how sinful we really are. Amen? Only sinful people know they need to be saved from their sin. Amen? And the law convinces us of how much sin we had to be saved from. Amen? Because the law, like you said, those rules and the regulations of the law showed them God's standards, showed them God's right and what God considered was wrong. And they know if you broke one of them, you, you uh, broke all of them. So, the, so God was trying to show them through his standards that they could never live up to his standard mm -hmm. because of their sins. Amen? Pretty much. Pretty much that's what I was going to say. Uh, the law came into effect to show them that they needed a Savior. Amen. Yeah. I mean, when, when you truly acknowledge that you're a sinner in need of saving from your sin, you will come to faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, the more we know God, the more we know of Him, the more we try to be like Christ Jesus, then we will see our sin. A amen. Amen. Because what we have to realize, when we came to faith in Christ, a change took place in us. And let me say, if you have come to faith in Christ, a change should be seen in you. And, and that change in you should be reflected on what you do outside. What I mean is, there's an internal change. And then in that internal change, whatever you do outside, whatever you do or say to people will show that change. For example, I cannot call Jesus said, love him with his mind, love, that we are to love him with our mind, body, and soul, and love thy neighbors thyself. Right? But how can we say we love Jesus if we don't love our brothers and sisters in Christ? Our actions really speak who we belong to. Y'all get that? Because if Christ, if the Holy Spirit is in you, you're gonna show it, you're gonna show the love of Christ toward other people. Amen? Amen. Now, if you if you're if, if if you're a hell raiser, if you're somebody that don't never speak to nobody, if you're somebody that don't show your love toward other people, if you're somebody that's always trying to stir things up, that ain't that ain't Christ. That ain't, that's nowhere the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the Bible says that we are a new creature in Christ, which means we now live our life for Him, and in pleasing Him is means. Not only that we are to love him with all our mind, body, and soul, but we are to love our neighbors as such. Amen. Despite what anybody say or do to you, you're still supposed to love them. Amen. We was totally against God and everything God represented it, but Jesus died while we were yet sinners. So what I'm saying is if your characteristic has not changed from your old self, you have to sit down and have just a little talk with Jesus. Have a little talk with Jesus because if, if, you're, if you are the same person you were uh, uh, 10 years ago, uh, the same person you were before you came to Christ, you need to sit down and have a little talk with Jesus. Because the thing is, is that when God changes you, he changes you. But no, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm an introvert, you know, I'm not comfortable talking with people, this and that. When you come to Christ, Jesus changes all of that. 
It's no excuse. And just because a person is quiet, I said an introvert. Okay. Introvert don't they don't socialize with people that are to themselves. They they don't say anything. But when 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 God changes you, like I said, it's a process. He changes you. You you're no longer who you used to be. Because yes, there's a lot. Of, there's some people in the church who are quiet. But at the same time, I see people who are quiet. You see the change start to happen in them because they start fellowship more. They start talking to the brothers and sisters in Christ more. Go ahead. You got, you got a question? Go ahead. Because I, I bring scripture. Because the thing is is that we are new creatures in Christ. We're new creatures but we're not perfect. We're not perfect. It, and that's why so I said it's a process. We still struggle with the fall. So we might not be none of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. We're all at different level. Like you say, it's a process. Right. But yeah, it's, 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 it's like the way you the way it seemed like it sounded to me is that when you come to faith in God, you are changed. You you're perfect. No, no. But we're not. No, no, no. Perfect. And I'm not saying perfect because we never will be perfect. Right. What I'm saying is it's a process. As as this, it, it, it's a process. It's it's a process mm -hmm. in the sense that we're not the same who same people we used to be before we came to Christ. Uh, yeah, to and every learning about God and what he wants for us to do. And if God puts it in our mouth and in our heart to say something to somebody as a new uh, preacher in Christ Jesus, yes, we don't go and say something. And, um, and, God wants us to and that's what I'm saying. It's, and, and, and that's why I use the word process. Everything is a process. We're, the more and more we get in the word, the more we're being sanctified by the word. And, and, and that sanctification means that we're being cleansed by the word. And the more and more we know about the word, the more and more we develop our relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens overnight. We still going to fall. We still going to falter. We still going to do a lot of things that is contrary to God. But what we don't do is practice sin. That's the change. That's the change that should happen automatically. Even though it's a process, practicing sin, no one is, is basically saying that you, what God has identified as a sin, you're still practicing it. When you come to faith in Jesus Christ, like Paul, like Paul was saying here, you can only come to faith in Christ when you know you are a sinner in need of saving. Amen? And practicing sin is something that you do habitually, something you do every day. And as a Christian, we don't habitually or practice sin every day that we know is a sin. Do we stumble and fall? Most definitely. Paul says in Romans, when I want to do right, I don't do right. That's the flesh. But the thing is, when you come to faith in Jesus Christ, there is a change going on in your life. It may not happen today. It may not happen next year. But there's a change going on. And that's why I said it's a process. We're not who we used to be. Amen. And it is a process. And we all should see a change in our life. 
Mm -hmm. If nobody else see it, we should see it in the business community. And the things and the actions, the things that we do, mm -hmm. it should be different when we work in the world. Exactly. Our talk should be different. Exactly. Our love should be different. Exactly. Our walk should be different. Exactly. Uh, I might not go out and express and some people however, can't. However, some someone people can't. should be able to see my love. Amen. Some people uh, cannot some people cannot go to another person and tell them about Jesus Christ. But the more and more they get into the word, the more they establish a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ, eventually they may be able to say, hey have a blessed day. Don't you know Jesus loves you? It is a process. It is a process. Not everybody can go in front of anybody and start talking to them about Jesus. Right? So give that give that boldness for that person to be the introvert. Yeah, because some introverts just they just don't they there's they have they they don't deal with people. They it's a certain they have, their group is real their, their their circle is real small. I've been around introverts and they and you have to really make the go to them to make them talk. Even an introvert, it, 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 even an introvert, it doesn't always have to be. And I use the introvert as an example. It doesn't always have to be. It's, it's their action. It's their act. So, and then a person can actually change when you say this is a process. That mm -hmm. process could actually be a person who's always running their mouth, always just saying stuff. And now you see them and they're, they're more reserved. And I have seen that too. That could be a a sign of the change process. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Everything is a process when it comes to us because we're in the flesh. We're no, we're not perfect. We're none of us are. So everything is a process. I have seen people who 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 gossip, who's bigger than uh, lost crystal some news, but all of a sudden you see that that change, and that's because they're more into the Word of God, and the Word of God is cleansing them, and they no longer gossip like they used to. They may gossip a little bit. But they don't gossip like they used to. Everything is a process. Mm -hmm. Everything is a process when it comes to us being new creatures, new creatures in Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't change overnight. Mm -hmm. We don't change overnight. Mm -hmm. And when I say practice in sin, we, as children of God, we don't practice sin in which God is called to sin. Mm -hmm. Not my words, but God's. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're, if you say you're a Christian. And you're a, and you're a liar. You're a habitual liar. That's something. That's a sin that that's got to be done away with. You may lie a little bit now. Everything is a process, and none of us will be perfect until we meet Jesus in the air. It says, "In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we all shall be changed." And that change is putting on a glorified body, a perfect body. Amen? And we're all different also. Yeah, God made each and every one of us different. The thing that is the same is our faith in Jesus Christ. Exactly. That and that's the, whole, that's the common denominator, our faith in Christ. Amen. But uh, uh, as we are trying to get to through the process, mm -hmm. we have a helper. Amen. The helper is, is the Holy Spirit which uh, reminds us of all things that we've been taught mm -hmm. to keep us straight and, and narrow. And I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Because one of the first things God's do, God does mm -hmm. when we come to faith in His Son, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit takes residence in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the issue sometimes with believers is that we don't submit to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We don't listen. Amen. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there. But we have to learn how to submit and listen to his voice. Mm -hmm. And that also shows spiritual maturity. The Bible says be slow to speak, mm -hmm. slow to anger, mm -hmm. and quick to listen. Mm -hmm. And I still struggle with that from time to time. Mm -hmm. But I ask God to make sure <laughs> that because I always want to talk, I'm always talking. But I'm always trying to, but I ask God to make sure I'm, 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 I'm slow to speak, quick to listen. The slow to anchor. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and that's something that, that that's something my old self before Christ. There's a change. But there's a change because I'm starting to I'm listening more. I'm listening to what people have to say. Now I'm not listening to when people try to criticize me in a bad way. I don't entertain it. Amen. But I will listen to Chris, criticism if it's Christian criticism. 
Amen. Amen. Anything else? Amen. Now, and, and I'm, I'm going to finish with this verse. We'll, go, we'll, we'll start at 20 next week. So in addition, Paul writes that the law was always meant to be temporary. It was added for God. It was added for God's people 430 years after God's promise to Abraham and his offspring. And only meant to be applied until that one specific offspring, Jesus, Jesus showed up to receive the promise as Abraham's ultimate descendant. And Paul also says that the law was put in place through angels by an immediator. And this phrase can also be confusing and is explained in better detail by Paul in, in, in verse 20. Amen? But well, we're going to stop right there for tonight. Because I like the discussion. This is, and this is what we need. We need discussion for clarification. Amen? Because the thing is, is that, you know, some people can use the crutch that say, well, God knows my heart. He knows how I feel. And, and, and we have to be careful when we say that because he does know our heart. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that we can't always use the excuse, well, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. We have to, some, we have to eventually get off the milk and get into the meat. And, and, and I say that in the sense we got to show some type of spiritual maturity. Amen. We can't continue to to use the old excuses we used to use. Why we don't do this and why we don't do that. But the more and more we get in studying of the word of God, the more our relationship becomes stronger with the Lord, we got to start doing going up, uh, doing what the Lord has told us to do. Do it. Stop it. And amen. Because uh, that and, being a, 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 and part of being a doer of his word is telling people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, we, our whole, Paul tries to explain that all this right and that our main focus as the church is the ministry of reconciliation. And that ministry of reconciliation is going telling somebody that Jesus died on the cross for their sins and there's no sin that God will not forgive them for if they come to faith in his son Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's what we should be doing. That's what we ought to be doing. And that is what we are supposed to do. And that's what Paul, amen. We are ambassadors. That amen. is our mission now. As ambassadors. Amen. And what I'm saying is, is even with that, it takes a process from people who don't normally talk or quiet to develop to the point where they can go tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Tell somebody what he did in their life. It was a process for me. It's a, it was a process for me to get up here and preach when I when I, when I announced my call. But I, I could see, but what God has done with me is made me focus on His Word, study His Word, and be careful not to give you what you want to hear. If that makes sense. Too many Christians or too many people who sits in these sanctuaries. Want, to, want the minister to give them what they want to hear and not the truth. And the truth is that we all got to do better. Amen. Amen. From the pulpit to the, to the seats. Amen. We all have to do better in the things of God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for your word. And Father, we pray. We thank you for the discussion as well, Father. And we just pray that we continue to be in your word, studying your word so we will have a stronger relationship with your will and your way and with you, Father. And Father, we just pray that you bless everyone who's here present and those who are watching via Facebook. And Father, we pray as we leave this place that you bless us with safe travel, safe journey to our ending destinations. Give you all the praises, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Got to do. Babe. Babe.